Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Reasons to Believe podcast. My name is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society. God has been under attack in the world almost since the beginning of time, but he and those who believe in him are under attack more now, it seems to me, than ever before. Atheism is increasing and atheists are becoming more vocal. This podcast is designed to equip Christians to do what the Holy Scriptures command and that is to earnestly contend for the faith and to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh us a reason of the hope that is in us. But more importantly, this broadcast slash podcast is designed to give you a reason to believe in God and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Our reasons to believe passage of Scripture from the Word of God today is First Peter chapter three verses eighteen through twenty two. It reads, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient. When once these long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a-preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water, the like figure whereunto even baptism doeth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, our reasons to believe quote for today is from Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers. He said, I am persuaded that men think there is no God because they wish there were none. They find it hard to believe in God and to go on in sin. So they try to get an easy conscience by denying his existence. Beloved, our reason to believe PowerPoint today is titled Addendum on Religion and Morality in the Argument from Conscience for the Existence of God, Part 2 from the Handbook of Christian Apologetics by Dr. Peter Kreeft and Dr. Ronald K. Tassili. They go on to say, There are four possible relations between religion and morality, God and goodness. Number one, religion and morality may be thought to be independent. Kierkegaard's sharp contrast between the ethical and the religious, especially in fear and trembling, may lead to such a supposition. But a an amoral God indifferent to morality would not be a wholly good God, for one of the primary meanings of good involved the moral, just, loving, wise, righteous, holy, kind, and be such a morality, not having any connection with God, the absolute being would not have absolute reality behind it. And then number two, 
God may be thought of as the inventor of morality as he is the inventor of birds. The moral law is often thought of as simply a product of God's choice. This is the divine command theory. A thing is good only because God commands it and evil because he forbids it. If that is all, however, we have a serious problem. God and his morality are arbitrary and based on mere power. If God commanded us to kill innocent people, that would become good since good here means whatever God commands. The divine command theory reduces morality to power. Socrates refuted the divine command theory pretty conclusively in Plato's Euthyphro. He asked Euthyphro, is a thing pious because the gods will it or do the gods will it because it is pious? He refuted the first alternative and thought he was left with the second as the only alternative. 3. But the idea that God commands a thing because it is good is also unacceptable because it makes God conform to a law higher than himself, a law that overarches God and humanity alike. The God of the Bible is no more separated from moral goodness by being under it than he is by being over it. He no more obeys a higher law that binds him than he creates the law as an artifact that could change and could well have been different like a planet. Fourth, the only rationally acceptable answer to the question of the relation between God and morality is the biblical one. Morality is based on God's eternal nature. That is why morality is essentially unchangeable. Leviticus 11.44 says, I am the Lord your God. Sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy, for I am holy. Our obligation to be just, kind, honest, loving, and righteous goes all the way up to ultimate reality, to the eternal nature of God, to what God is. That is why morality has absolute and unchangeable binding force on our conscience. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for having faith and belief to come easy to me. Uh, but Lord, as you know, for some people it does not come that easy. They need reasons. They need proof. But you have said very clearly in your word, you have asked people to come and reason uh, with you. And so we thank you for uh, these scholars who help us to break that down and to uh, draw all of us closer to you. And I pray that you would help us to act like we believe in you by obeying you, loving you worshiping you, praising you, and serving you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you do not believe in God, and you do not trust Christ as your Savior right now, may I lovingly encourage you to get to know him today, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today for your salvation. For he said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just simply believe in your heart, dear friend, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, 
was buried and rose from the dead for your sins by your power, by the power of God. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you and for me and for the world so that we all can live in heaven with him forever. Dear friend, pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart today, and he will do so. Romans ten thirteen says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, please keep in mind these reasons to believe. God bless you.